I'd like everybody tuning in for this video today to do me just one favor, please. Whether you're new to the channel, old, have been hanging around for a while, or perhaps watching on the sidelines, kind of back and forth as to whether or not you will subscribe, become a part of the weather-centric community, that's neither here nor there. If you're finding this channel for the first time today, and you just so happen to click on this video, do me one favor, please. Let's go ahead and squash any of the hashtag seasons over comments that I've seen in full circulation, not only on my videos in recent days, but across the weather sphere, especially in the digital realm on social media. In fact, a few of the comments and other sources I've seen in passing over on YouTube and, and Instagram, TikTok, you name it, some of their statements have already been null and void with the up and comings that we've had in the last couple days since the last time we talked. So it'd be great if you could just do me that one favor. And I'll go ahead and keep tracking and updating you all on everything else, which is exactly what I want to do today. There's a potable signal that really has my attention that could really yank the carpet out from underneath us in terms of the way 2025 has behaved altogether. Welcome back to the Weather Center and happy Monday, October 13th, 2025. We're nearly to the halfway mark of October and it has indeed proven to be the wild card of our hurricane season. We're going to talk all the latest information that I have for you, some of the interesting models trends that I've been following for the last three, four, five days now, knock on wood, because it seems like every time I come into a video confident with layers upon layers of continuity with all of our models, something just suddenly goes wide right or wide left. And the next thing you know, I'm left holding the bag as my old mentor, Mr. Shane Castle used to say. So thank you all for tuning in for today, taking some time out of your Monday to join me here in the weather center. If you are brand new to the channel or you've been thinking about it back and forth on the fence, it'd mean the world to all all of us as a part of the Weather Center community. If you kindly hit that subscribe button, share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it, and let's give that like button a little nudge. Let's nudge it right now. Please, if you wouldn't mind, that'd be great. And then drop me a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know where you're watching from, especially if you're in the Caribbean, the Lesser Antilles, Jamaica, Cayman Islands, even in Central America. I know I have a few of you who watch down there as well. I'd love to hear from you because this is going to be one of the things that could directly impact your weather over the next seven to 10 days. And I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Let's get over to National Hurricane Center's homepage. First and foremost, yeah, we swapped Jerry out since the last time we talked, and we've decided to replace it with Tropical Storm Lorenzo. Lorenzo popped up, I believe, either this morning or very late last night. One of the two, we had some spontaneous development of a tropical wave that National Hurricane Center had been tracking. Max sustained winds in the storm right now at 50 miles an hour with a central pressure down to 1,002 millibars, already taking that northwest track at 16 miles an hour. This was never going to be an issue for anybody. This should not come as a surprise. Surprise. This was always forecast to find the weakness in our subtropical high out there, an excessive troughing that's really reached itself across the Atlantic, all thanks to our previous systems that have really helped to intensify the long wave pattern, the jet stream. We've also had a little bit of assistance with some of our West Pacific storms out there that have really helped to amp up what the jet stream is doing, which is why I do think that for the United States and Canada, pretty much all of North America, we're going to be in an on and off fall slash almost pseudo wintertime patterns because of how upset the jet stream is across the mid latitudes. So Lorenzo is going to continue to move on like this, and it kind of gets a little interesting because as high pressure builds back in. A lot of our track guidance does think it'll do a good old gene loop-de-loop -loop back in 2004, only this case, seven, eight, nine hundred 900 miles away from any major landmass, so this thing can go doodling around as much as it wants, loop-de-looping and spinning, do a barrel roll if it really wants to, not really going to impact anybody, but we do have a tropical wave that is now splashed down off the immediate coast of Africa. It's kind of falling off the coast right now, just plopping on over into the Atlantic waters. It's centered right here, fairly low latitude, and it seems like we could see a formation zone later this week somewhere in this general area, somewhere in there. I really don't have any confidence that this gets going in the same longitudinal zone as Lorenzo. This might not be an MDR system, but as we get closer to the Lesser Antilles and the Caribbean, confidence is growing that it will try to find a way to take on tropical characteristics. This is a close-up look of Tropical Storm Lorenzo moving that northwest. You can see it kind of right in through there. There's the center of circulation. A little bit of southwesterly shear kind of trying to displace a bit of the thunderstorms. Kind of lopsided. You can see it's got that shrimpy 
shape that we typically look for for tropical low pressures. But because that low center is becoming a bit more exposed, this tells me we do have some upper level wind shear racing across it. And then when you look on the northeast side of the system at the upper level clouds, the outflow racing off towards the east, another indicator that there is some shear affecting it. Not likely to become a hurricane. This will remain as a mid to high end tropical storm as it spins on out into the central and eventually back towards the eastern Atlantic. Not affecting anybody, but this is our 12th named storm of the hurricane season. After this would be Melissa. And I want to turn our attention now. I'll take us full screen so you all can see. It's this little tyke right here. Already has some broad cyclonic spinning with it, counterclockwise turning in the clouds. That is our next tropical wave, and we're going to watch what happens as it moves between 20 west and about 50 west. The GFS and the Euro do believe it should hold on to some of its thunderstorms, some of its moisture, as we are under fairly favorable conditions across the tropical Atlantic. We're not looking at any crazy wave breaking or dry air dumps. You can even see back behind Lorenzo right now, we really don't have much happening in the mid or low level pattern, the low level flow. You can see just some open cell, closed cell strata cumulus to the north there of where my pink line is drawn. It's not really moving. So the pattern has kind of calmed down and we're going to see what happens with this thing over the next several days. Moving over to your actual mid-level vorticity, you can see it right there. Nice little pocket. And then believe it or not, back over in this direction, there's a little feature there that might try to spin and become just a tightly wound area of low pressure. Some of our models, the GFS, the Icon, the Canadian model here and there, kind of try to show this becoming a maybe... I wouldn't go as far as to say a potential tropical cyclone, but we have had some closed low pressures indicated on our models, try to lift up towards the north and back towards the west across the Yucatan and Belize, so we may receive another couple batches of heavy rainfall and thunderstorms, especially after that first disturbance that was tagged for the 10 for 10 split out there not too long ago by National Hurricane Center. But it is very interesting to see it popping up, even in the vorticity right there. Icon, GFS, Canadian models were the ones that really sniffed that out. But that's not going to be of any major concern, at least for the time being. This is also what we're watching. If you notice, we still have the favorable upper-level forcing now across the Atlantic, and it should hang out with us until maybe about the last 7 to 10 days of October. We've got very good upper-level forcing that's going to hang with us, and then it will linger over Africa before transitioning to phases 3 through 5, back over the maritime continents, reinforcing our now officially developed La Nina. I know that the atmosphere hasn't quite behaved like it, and I do think a lot of it is attributed to the warmth, the excessive warmth that we've had built up in our negative PDO up against China, Russia, Japan, south of the Aleutian Islands of Alaska, and then it was once extending all the way out to western Canada and the Pacific Northwest of the United States. We've had a lot of warmth bottled up there, and I think that's possibly what is thermodynamically messing with the way things should be behaving, especially the subtropical and the polar front jet stream up towards the north of where the tropics are. So even though we haven't fully behaved like a La Nina or a cool neutral, it's there. I promise you. We have the advisory official from Climate Prediction Center. You can't argue with the anomalies. So we've got the favorable forcing. La Nina did happen to show itself, and we are weakening the warm blob that's to the south of Alaska, portions of Russia, and the western Canadian provinces. So I do think that's also going to help to continue to favor the Atlantic. When you look at our latest weekly products, you can see Lorenzo signal 1,000 miles away. Same thing with what's left of Jerry. Jerry did kind of bounce back. They're probably not going to designate it once again because now it's also attached to the jet and some of the frontal fragments, I will call them, that extends through the subtropical Atlantic. But you can see here that we have three decent signals, one way up in the mid-lats again, just like with what sub tropical storm Karen did Jerry did rebound for a little bit and then Lorenzo and then this bubble of green shades there is our next tropical wave I'll go ahead and change the ink color so you all can see and you also can notice that that is expected to track generally westward that's the whole signal right there making its way into the Caribbean so lesser Antilles the windward and leeward islands I want us paying close attention to this please throughout the 20th through the 27th that time frame that's when I think things could get going and it really has me wondering, are we actually going to verify a forecast that we made together on this channel from back in January and February? I had mentioned 
Please, if you could in the comments, if you're still watching right now, drop it in the comments down below. Let's testify to this. I'd mentioned that June and July, we're going to have slop fest storms, slopical storms in the form of fronts, homegrown systems, and then maybe some weak tropical waves thanks to the dust and the dry air that we had to battle out there. And then I'd mentioned October big system that we're all going to be tracking together. That's when we're going to be tracking the big one that could possibly be impactful far more than some of the other systems, if not 90% of the systems we've seen this hurricane season. So this really does have me at the edge of my seat. Like, are we really about to hit another preseason forecast almost right on the money? Because this is now within four to five days from Halloween. So let me know in the comments if you remember that live discussion we hosted back in January or February. And then between the 27th and just beyond Halloween, notice that the Caribbean weeklies are now back up to that 50 to 60 percentile down there. That is going to be the hotspot we watch as we continue into November, and then we continue to hold that hotspot as we rock into the first 7 to 10 days of November as well. These ensembles have been very, very interesting the last few days. The Euro especially has been a little back and forth, but I think now that the wave is coming off of Africa and we can more or less lock in as they say now our models are starting to all correct and we're seeing very similar trends across them we're not seeing very early development we're not seeing major hurricane development too early this is likely going to be a case of development as we get past the lesser antilles our trade winds are going to be a lot more relaxed we've got the rising motions and a little bit of an influence from a trough extending down over the eastern united states that's going to help to rough up the pattern a little bit develop some more moisture get rid of any dry air or any wind shear that's down there. I think that's why this is going to be a case of Caribbean Genesis. So as you take the zero Z run through time, there goes our tropical wave. Some overcooked members out there in the main development region. I don't vote. I don't think that's going to happen. Sorry. I really do not give that a vote of confidence. If we do, it'll be gradual development. Look at Jerry. Look at Lorenzo now. We're not quite in the point in the hurricane season anymore where the tropics are just that favorable, at least the main development region between Africa and maybe 50 West. At earliest, we may have an organizing low pressure, maybe a PTC even by the Lesser Antilles 60 West. That would probably be the roughest early bet I could put on this in terms of when it really starts to shrink down and take on that look. From there, it goes through the Windward Islands predominantly. A couple members nudge it into the Leeward Islands, but regardless, so I want all of you to watch it. And then at about the day 10 mark, we are off to the races, really starting to see something getting its act together south of Puerto Rico, south of Hispaniola as it approaches Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, or moves into the central southern Gulf. Then it gets very interesting from there. That's when it's all hands on deck, and we all got to watch for that swap in our Pacific North Atlantic or North American oscillation, the good old PNA. That's going to be the dividend here in terms of whether this crashes into Central America or this continues north. Now, this afternoon's model run... Not as excited, it definitely shows more of that delayed onset of development towards Haiti, Jamaica, but still showing that same general trend that something's going to be down there by about the 26th to the 28th of October, and then either A, negative PNA is going to be holding strong, driving it westward, or a positive PNA flip is going to pull it north. And we've seen that before several different times. You can see the same thing on the GEFS, the GFS ensemble showing the same thing, some overcooked members. We're going to get away from that. I think the GFS is going to start to correct. We've already seen some corrections throughout the day today, bringing a storm much deeper into the Caribbean and then lifting it either through the Turks and Caicos or the Bahamas or back towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Regardless, though, Given the fact that even our lesser models, the Korean model, the UK model, the Australian model, you know, models you typically don't see thrown around are starting to develop a spin, this tells me we got to watch. That's why I've been mentioning to you all we definitely want to pay attention to this, and this is why. As we get away from the troughing that's brought down fall over the eastern United States and here in central Florida, we're going to see some digging cooler air over the western side of the Atlantic helping to supplement ridging over the eastern Atlantic. Notice that we've bullied our sub tropical ridge way down to the south and east and as a result because of that dome of higher pressure we're going to see that wave stay predominantly low latitude moving towards the windward islands it isn't until just after that we finally start to see some progression of the pattern and that's when we start to notice we get more of that zonal stretching 
So as a result, you start to see more of that east to west trade wind flow down there. I'll show you that right now. And there you have it. So there could still be a bit of a weakness, depending on this system here. We'll have to watch it. That's where we get those model iterations where it gets into the Caribbean and tries to lift up north like this. But overall, notice that your trade wind flow is due east to west. We've got our easterly winds, and the pattern isn't as jumped up or hopped up as before. So this will likely make it beyond the Lesser Antilles. We're not going to see another Aaron, Umberto, or anything like that. Lesser Antilles, my frontline folk down there right now. So I want you watching this very closely, and then we'll continue to dial in what happens after that as we get closer in time because after all today is only the 13th we're still about 10 to 13 days away from anything really being down there so we've got a lot of time to cover the trends but the fact that we have such good continuity already tells me a lot this is the flip I was telling you about. This is your NAO, the North Atlantic Oscillation. Typically, when we're in a negative phase, we favor landfalls and we favor development in the tropics. We're going to keep that negative phase out until about the 25th of October, so plenty of time for this thing to work itself together out there. And then look at the PNA. We're going to switch back and forth. We've got a little bit of a positive phase right now. That's what's bringing us our dry, cool conditions here all the way down as far south as central Florida. Then we've got that ridge, that elongation the ridge across the Atlantic into the Southeast United States, and then look at how the model continues to trend towards troughing right around Halloween. And that's when we're expecting something to be down in the Central Caribbean. And if that does verify, if we don't trend towards a negative setup, both models do seem to agree that as we get closer to Halloween, we're going to start to see a shift to the positive phase. You look at the GFS ensemble right around the same time and that positive phase does come back. That is a classic signature for if anything, even if it's stuck up against Central America or South America for it to get kind of magnetized towards the north, and that's when I think we'll know everything we need to know about this system as we continue to track it through this upcoming week. Now, for La Nina, probably going to stick around with us until about the beginning of spring next year. La Nina is in full effect. We've got the advisory courtesy of Climate Prediction Center. The forecast did verify, and as you look here at our latest probabilistic and our model-based probabilistic outlooks, expecting it to kick it with us until about my birthday in February, if not March, getting ready to hit that transition season once again into spring. And then there you have it right there front and center. And so alert system status, the La Nina advisory has hit. La Nina conditions emerged in September 2025 as indicated by the expansion of below average sea surface temperatures and all that fun jazz that usually identifies a La Nina. And that's where I'll wrap up. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really want us to watch this. I really do. This could be the one that changes the rhythm that we followed all hurricane season. It's been up and out, up and out, up and out, up and out, up and out. But even in 2023, when everything was up and out, we had a Dahlia. So there's always that one. There's always that one that tries to sneak in under the radar. And October is typically the month where they try to do so. Next name on the list would be Melissa. Milton hit in October of last year. Michael hit in October of 2018. There have been some notable big M storms in the month of October. I'm sure there's been others as well, but those are the two that immediately come to mind. I'll do some research for our next video behind the scenes so I can list some other notable systems. But again... If you've watched with me to the end, I just want to echo, we're not going crazy yet. We're not hyping. We're just saying <laughs> the trends are there, and the trends are not all of our friends this time. Could still be friends with us in the United States, but regardless, it seems like, especially if this does get past the Lesser Antilles and starts to develop, that's when regardless of where it goes, even if it goes backwards, upside down, does a Shikra barrel roll, you know, whatever you want to put on the table, that's when somebody will receive it. So I'm going to keep a close eye on this one, but until next time, we'll talk to you very soon. This is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.